The Story of St. Anthony of Padua A beloved saint, a devoted Catholic, an honorable man of God who devoted his life to God. As you learn more about St. Anthony, pray for his inspirational devotion and miraculous novenas. Let's understand why we have given St. Anthony the patronage of missing items and so many others. Let us look into his incredible story for inspiration. St. Anthony was born in 1195, shortly after St. Francis of Assisi in Lisbon. As a child, he found solace in reading the Bible. At the age of 15, Fernando entered the religious order of St. Augustine. Life at the monastery was hardly peaceful for the young man and difficult for study and solace. A critical time in his life came when several Franciscan monks were tortured and beheaded. Their remains were carried in a solemn procession to where Fernando lived in the monastery. This event, while being such a tragic act, truly began the journey and inspiration for young Fernando. So much so that it inspired him to make a momentous decision, one that would change his life and the lives of many to come. He decided that he would become a Franciscan. The young Augustinian monk called Fernando went to the convent of St. Anthony, where he took vows of the Franciscan order and assumed the name of Anthony in honor of the patriarch of hermits. His passion, education, and talents were unveiled Francis of Assisi heard of Anthony's skills as a preacher and reassigned the young priest to preach in northern Italy. Legend has it that he had no one listening to his preaching. So without an audience this particular day, he went to the river and preached to the fish. By doing this, he ended up getting everyone's attention. From the beginning of his vocation, he shared his feelings with the Franciscan brothers, saying, I would gladly put on the habit of your order if you would promise to send me as soon as possible to the land of the Saracens, the Muslims, that I may gain the crown of the holy martyrs. True to their promise, the Franciscans allowed Anthony to go and convert the Muslims, to pursue what he felt was his calling, to be a witness for Christ and a martyr as well. Due to his poor health, he could not further his missionary work there. His love of solitude and prayer was quickly interrupted after hearing his powerful and passionate words. He then became a famous preacher, and that became his mission. His goal was to preach the Word of God in a positive manner and not argue or condemn others that did not believe. He went to many poor towns, and in order for followers to believe that he could relate he felt he had to live the same way in order for them to believe. He wanted to convert others to Christianity. But within his years of preaching, it is said that he may have made over 400 trips throughout Italy and France, which became quite arduous on his body and health. But Anthony continued to preach as he became a teacher of the friars within the order. His days were long and exhausting. After his morning mass and sermon, Anthony would hear confessions. 
This sometimes lasted all day, as did his fasting and constant prayer. In 1226, he was appointed provincial superior, but still took time for his solitary prayer in a small hermitage. His last audience was up to 30,000 people. A bodyguard was needed to protect him from the people armed with scissors who wanted to snip off a piece of his habit as a relic. He grew weak and wanted to go back to Padua, but was unable to make it home. He made it only to Arcella. He received the last sacraments, sang and prayed with the friars there. When one of them asked Anthony what he was staring at so intently, he answered, I see my Lord. He died peacefully. He was only 36 and had only been a Franciscan for 10 years. Thousands came to view the body of Anthony and attend his burial. Immediately, his grave at once became a place of devotion and incredible miracles. Just the next year, Pope Gregory IX was moved by all the miracles during his life and that occurred at his tomb. The Pope declared Anthony of Padua a saint. In 1946, Pope Pius XII officially declared Saint Anthony a doctor of the church. So why is Saint Anthony known for finding lost or missing items or property? It's related to an incident that happened in his own life. Legend has it he had a favorite book of Psalms that he treasured. The book was hand printed, which included his own personal notes and the comments he had made in it, which assisted him in teaching in the Franciscan order. It is said that a novice leaving the community had stolen St. Anthony's treasure. Anthony prayed for the return of his treasured possession. Soon after, the novice returned the book and sought Anthony's forgiveness, which was given. St. Anthony is also known as the guardian of the male, resulting from another incident in his life. St. Anthony sought solitude in time for reflection, yet he was such a popular orator, he rarely got time to rest. He honorably wrote to his superior for permission for relief and solace for personal reflection. St. Anthony heard no response, so he continued with his responsibilities. Unfortunately, it was due to the non-mailing of his letter. Thus, one of the many stories in praying for the importance of handling mail. Novenas to St. Anthony are celebrated in many churches and shrines around the world. Many begin on Tuesdays, as Tuesday was the day Anthony was buried and the miracles at his tomb began. Stories say that the beginning of Novenas are linked to a story of a childless couple. After many, many years praying for a child, the wife took her troubles to St. Anthony. He is said to have appeared to her in a dream, telling her, for nine Tuesdays, one after the other, make visits to the Franciscan chapel and approach the holy sacraments of penance and the altar. Then pray, and what you ask, you shall obtain. The couple miraculously had their prayers answered and had a child. Many images of St. Anthony show him with lilies. In many places, lilies are blessed and distributed on the feast of St. Anthony. The lily is meant to remind us of St. Anthony's purity and our own need to pray for the grace of purity in times of temptation. 
many stories exist as to St. Anthony cradling the Christ child. In most, it is said, St. Anthony had traveled to a local hermitage to spend time in prayer. One night, while deep in prayer, Jesus appeared to him as a child. The room filled with light and laughter as St. Anthony held the Christ child in his arms. As a story is told, the owner of the hermitage, upon seeing the light, came to investigate only to behold St. Anthony and the Christ child. When the vision ended, St. Anthony realized the owner was kneeling at the door and begged him not to share the story until after Anthony's death. The gifts of St. Anthony continue also as a patron saint of the poor, of sailors and fishermen, of priests and travelers, a protector and guardian of the males, hermitage and wonder worker. What a miraculous and inspirational life for all of us to admire and follow. St. Anthony of Padua is known as one of the Catholic Church's most popular and honored saints ever. The most honorable reason is that his life was what every Christian's life is meant to be. Devotional to God, calling of being concerned for the needs of others, and to have total trusting love and dependence upon God. Think of St. Anthony and his many powerful prayers. Thank you for praying with us today. Please like and subscribe to our channel. May God bless you.